So NOx reduction, what does that mean? And how can we look at that for the marketplace in the near future for our marine community here on cruise? Well, for, for just a moment, I want to first step back that Wartzilla does not just produce engines. Although we're known for engines, it's one of the largest two-stroke and several different We also do a lot more drives. We include the electrical end as well. The controls on the bridge, propellers of all sizes, controllable pits, fish pitch, in nozzles, outside of nozzles, with jets, transverse thrusters, drives, seals, bearings. We include automation, ship design, a whole wide range of things besides the engines we're known for. We also produce a lot of environmental management technologies. Here you can see what we're going to talk about, selective catalytic reduction for the marine marketplace. Let's look at the legislation, what components are, some of the leading technologies, what selective catalytic reduction is. Take a quick look at how do you mold from the perspective of technology and instead look at the businessman's bang for buck. We'll talk briefly about a summary. So first, the current legislation in, in the, uh, the IMO. Started back in May of 2004 with the ratification of Annex 6. We then have had a large number of CICAs in the Baltic Sea and North Sea. And today, 2011, we have an ICA coming in the United States very shortly, a whose effective date is 1 August 2012. What did the IMO regis legislation originally start with? Tier 1. January 1st of 2000 had a prescribed limit based upon engine RPM. 2011, a couple of months ago, it changed to Tier 2. Much tighter requirement where the NOx was reduced by 20% across engines of all sizes depending on their RPM. Soon we'll be coming down to a much tighter regime and that will be tier three. All ships in designated areas will have to hit a very tight emission requirement. 80% below that originally subscribed to at tier one. So the NOx will become a very tight, ever reducing requirement across all engine sizes. In the U.S., we're a treaty. The Senate has to pass it and the President signed it in the middle of 2008. When President Bush signed this, it became ratified and we came in force January of 2009, nearly two years ago. Since then, the U.S. EPA has also, with Canada, petitioned and received a go-ahead for a 200-mile emission control area off our coast, virtually encapsulating the U.S. and Canada within an umbrella. This umbrella is much different than, than the SICAs of the Baltic Sea of 2005 and the North Sea of 2006. Why? Took the word S off. It's now an emission control area, not a sulfur emission control area. The difference being is that in August 1st, 2012, the emission control area first reduces the sulfur content in the fuel and in 2016 has a NOx requirement. SOX and NOx. The others were SOX only. U.S. Coast Guard has enforcement on foreign flag vessels in U.S. waters. And the U.S. EPA, if you have a U.S. flag vessel, has its categories based upon engines of different cylindrical volume size, not RPM. So that's important to remember if you have a U.S. flag vessel. Take a quick look at the exhaust components that a selective catalytic reducer will try to take care of. In the exhaust, you can see you have a large amount of nitrogen, as in ambient air, some oxygen, and then you have other things, carbon dioxide, a little bit of water, and argon. So there are some differences. And what does that mean? Here are the different components, sulfides, nitrogens, total hydrocarbons, VLCs, particulate matter. Particulate matter was the focus of the EPA when they reduced the sulfur now to low and ultra low sulfur fuels and ash. Those are the two things that contribute a lot to particulate matter. Why is that important? Because that's a carcinogen per the EPA. Smoke on an opacity is, is also important. These are the ones that are attacked internationally and more to the U.S. Here's some of the leading engine technologies you'll find, both on the primary and the secondary side. 
scoring them out. The more stars, the better. Primary for NOx, SOx, and PM. Secondary after the engine. And then if you decide to convert and go to natural gas, where do you have the most stars across the board in any category? It is converting to gas. Very good on NOx, SOx, and PM, and smoke. Everything else is somewhat less, and there's also a lot of baggage here added to a traditional diesel engine. So you can see the reduction methods between the primary, secondary methods as well as to what tiers they might be able to get to. Engine technology, after treatment, and fuel quality. Let's take a look at the uh, SCRs. Remember the chart, it's going to soon fall, 80%. So with an engine, you would have an SCR, which basically replaces the silencer and the uptakes. There are components with this, a dosing unit, air pressurization to basically run soot blowers, control urea tank, and a pump, pump to meter the urea into the system. But basically, it deoxidizes the nitrogen, the NOx into nitrogen and simple water vapor. An SCR basically is sized to match the exhaust mass flow of any type engine. So the Wojtzilla reducer will work on any brand of engine, ours or, and others. It's standardized, can run without reagent if you choose to bypass it, and SIP blowers clean it just as you would have for any uh, heat exchanger in the uptakes. Here's basically how it works. Exhaust gas comes in. Urea is injected into the stream, goes over a flow mixer that helps straighten the flow out, and goes into the catalytic elements, whose temperature range is using a fairly hot gas. And that actually takes the chemistry and converts it into nitrogen and water. So the catalyst is key. Basically, four nitrogen oxides and ammonia plus oxygen through the catalyst creates nitrogen and harmless water. Just as in your car, but a much larger scale. NOx can reduce 90%, meeting tier three. Urea consumption is modest. Fuels, it works on across a wide band of fuels, and it will be designed for what sulfur range of fuel do you want to attenuate. Obviously, the more sulfur, the more reagent and contact time is required going through the unit. It's a lower sulfur range, it'll be more compact and smaller. So there you see the system. We just described the reactor. You have the dosing unit with a pump to dose, pressurized air to clean the, on the soot blowers and controller with a urea tank. We've, we've manufactured many hundreds of these on land and many dozens of these for marine application. Components are pretty simple for the dosing, control unit, and pumping unit. Well, let's take a quick look at value mapping analysis. How would you move from technology to bang for the buck? Because you've got to get a sense of where do I put my money if I'm investing in a new technology. To the left here in red, we see anything that improves the fuel-specific rate. To the right of here, we see everything in red that adds negatively. It's a penalty for the fuel rate. And in green bars to the right, you see how much NOx emissions are reduced. There's only two that improve specific fuel rate while targeting NOx, heat recovery and an SCR. Everything else has a fuel penalty associated with it. So there's really two leading ways to go after working against NOx and working with fuel still being improved. Here's the results of a study across several different ways of doing this with NOx reductions. The net present value of a stream of calculations going to the future with a net present value coming back, their hurdle rate for capital was 15%, a merit study. But you look at this and you say, what do I do if I want to get the best bang for buck? Kind of hard to tell. Some look good, some don't. So why don't you use value mapping as a way to analyze this going forward? Value mapping says the relative performance against the relative price. 
if you have a low relative price and superior performance, you're in the green area. That's excellent. You have fairly poorer performance, less than 100% and relatively higher price, you're now in a red area, and that's inferior. Then you just come back to these items, you plot them out. Number one happens to be for people who want great performance at a modest cost, SCR. Water fuel emulsion is point two. It's performance and price. Plot out number three. Injector upgrades, it's on what we call the neutral line, where performance just equals the price component. Anywhere along here. So that's kind of so-so. Four. Water in the combustion air. Why? It humidifies the air, drops the temperature, reduces NOx. Relative performance is about average. Price is above average. Beginning to get in the red zone. Five and six. Look at seven and eight. Inferior performance. Seven is injector timing retard. Often used in engines to reduce NOx. And number eight, engine derating is obviously another one. But if you look at this scale, you can quickly see there's only real, two real choices. Can you afford all the water this requires? Probably not. Then look at an SCR. Bang for buck. In summary, we can say this, that the SCR system is very simple and proven and allows you to reduce the NOx across a wide range of engines selected to match the size. It's optimal. It has several advantages. Works over a broad temperature range. Selective, it attacks the night uh, NOx that you're looking at. You can go to very, very low sulfur contents with the sulfur conversion stability. Because you're replacing a muffler, you have basically a trade-off with, with no additional back pressure. Requirements. The best way it runs is optimally at steady state over, a, over, a, over a, the operating range it needs. So that's going to conclude our presentation on the uh, SCRs. If there's any questions about this, I'll gladly address them now. We also have copies of all the presentations today for anyone who'd like to take it with them. And we also have beverages for those who'd like to now partake of something better than this presentation. <laughs> any questions? Anyone have a question? Thank you very much for coming. We have several other presentations tomorrow across a wide range of topics, uh, pretty much each and every hour. So please come back. If we haven't covered one you're interested in, you can check the guide. We also have a uh, uh, guide presentation booklets here for, as a reminder. I want to thank you for coming, and I'm, I'm glad we had a visit earlier today. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.